Welcome back to another Crafty Workshop Builds video. Today I'm going to be talking about 5 recommended mods for a stage 2 Mark 6 GTI, so stay tuned. The intake system is designed to supply the turbo with air. The stock intake is a limiting factor when attempting to make the engine produce more horsepower. Cold air intakes are designed to help to reduce the air intake temperature and also to increase the air flow. Some manufacturers claim that the car will gain extra horsepower, with one company claiming a peak of 15 horsepower. Aftermarket intakes remove the need for a box surrounding the air filter and instead use large diameter intake tubes that are smoother, have less bends and are often wider than the original factory ones. Removing the air box and using smoother tubes gives the engine uninterrupted airflow. While you might not immediately notice any gain of horsepower after installing a cold air intake, this mod will definitely enhance the sound of the turbo and the diverter valve. I think a cold air intake is a great first mod because they are not hard to install and will give instant benefit. Also a cold air intake is a requirement for most stage 2 tunes. The exhaust system is designed to extract the exhaust gases. The stock exhaust system restricts the airflow and possible horsepower gains especially after installing a cold air intake. More air going into the engine will also mean more air coming out of the engine. Aftermarket exhaust systems tend to produce more airflow due to the larger diameter in the piping, which in turn makes the airflow faster. When you have a faster airflow, it will increase the high end power of the engine. If you are on a budget, you can get a catless downpipe or a high flow catted downpipe, then get a cat back exhaust system later on. One thing to note, the catless downpipe will flow more air, but it might cause emission problems when it comes to passing inspection. If you are not on a tight budget, you can get a cat back and pair it with a downpipe to complete the exhaust system. Most people like exhaust upgrades because of the sounds. But the possible horsepower gains are important as well, and having an upgraded exhaust is required for most stage 2 tunes. An upgraded exhaust system will increase the exhaust flow rate and make it easier to make additional horsepower. Tuning the car will allow you to take advantage of the bolt-on parts. The horsepower gains will definitely be noticeable when compared to the stock performance. Some stage 2 tunes claim to gain up to 70 horsepower. There are some companies that will allow you to install the ECU flash file on your car yourself, instead of driving and taking the car to a tuner. Some companies also offer a pro tune. So instead of installing an off-the-shelf tune on your car, you would log the car and then send the log files to the tuner. The tuner will make the adjustments based on the log files, then send you back an updated file to install on your car. And you would be essentially getting a custom tune for your car, based on the mods and capabilities. This type of tuning can be a convenient way for you to get your car tuned, if the tuner you want to work with is located at a long distance away from you. This is one of the reasons why I chose the Cobb Access Port platform for tuning on my car. The Access Port is a handy device. I'm able to log the car with it, instead of using a laptop unlike other tuning services. A laptop is more bulky and I'd have to pay attention to the battery life. I also like that I'm able to view various monitors and gauges. It can read and clear fault codes, which is another handy feature to have while out on the road. However, no matter which company or method you choose to go with, installing a stage 2 tune will allow you to run more boosts and take advantage of the upgraded parts. The car will pull more aggressively and be more responsive.
After increasing the horsepower, handling is the next thing to pay attention to. Lowering the car will eliminate the body roll and make the car more planted while cornering. One of the cheapest ways to lower your car is to use lowering springs. However, you won't have the ability to adjust the ride height and shock dampening. Coilovers will increase the handling, but it will also allow for height adjustments. Some brands might have adjustable shock dampening and an adjustable camber plate for the front. It's nice to have adjustable height because you will be able to dial and adjust the ride height to match your specific wheel setup. If you're after a certain drop or look, depending on the size of the rims and the profile of the tires, you will need to adjust to facilitate the setup to gain your desired look. Airbag suspension would be one of the most expensive option, but you will have the option of changing the ride height on demand. You can set and raise the ground clearance for everyday driving, as well as a super low stance and track tune handling, all available at the push of a button. Some systems will allow ride height adjustments while on the move. You could possibly raise your car while approaching a pothole that you can't avoid. However, it's up to you to choose whichever method you want to use to lower your car. But no matter which of these ways you choose, it will more than likely increase the handling of your car, which is the reason why I consider this as a performance upgrade. The factory turbo outlet pipe is constructed of plastic and is extremely narrow, resulting in an airflow restriction. Most upgraded pipes are 2.25 inches in diameter, which will increase the airflow, and a lot of the upgraded pipes are also aluminum, which is more durable. The factory throttle pipe is also plastic and is extremely narrow resulting in an airflow restriction. Most upgraded throttle pipes are 2.5 inches in diameter which will increase the airflow. Some of these upgraded pipes also bypass the OEM noisemaker. The noisemaker can also restrict the airflow. If your car is manual, installing a short throw shifter will reduce the shift movement and improve the shift quality. The stock shifter on these cars are sloppy and the throws from gear to gear is long. If you decide to do any form of aggressive driving, you run the risk of missing or grinding gears. It's best to get a shifter that provides adjustments from front to back and side to side movements to shorten the shifts. And that's gonna be it for this one. I will be making a top five list for a stage three Mark VI GTI, and I will have the link in the description below, so feel free to check it out. And thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.